It's me again, Demetrius Andrade. And if you're looking to take your fight game to the next level, try this, the fighter stack. Everything you need. Hey everybody, Marcus Vegas here in Las Vegas, being joined with a very special guest. Not the one time, not the two time, not the three time or four time, five time world heavyweight champion in wrestling, Mr. Booker T in Las Vegas. Man, yeah, man. fight week, welcome. Yes, indeed. Um, couldn't pick a better week to be out here. It's a little hot, but uh, it's gonna get a little bit hotter even on Saturday when uh, Manny Pacquiao and Keith Thurman meet in the main event. It's gonna be an awesome pay-per-view. And I do think it's going to be the biggest fight of summer. Yeah. So when I saw you yesterday, I flipped out. <laughs> like the, the fan in me flipped out because, you know, I, I know you've been getting it a lot. A lot of us watched you uh, growing up as a kid. And, and the second thought was, damn, he likes boxing? Yeah. Like, you know, I questioned yeah, it. You're yeah. a huge boxing fan. No, nah, man, that's my uh, my passion. Uh, Muhammad Ali was my idol uh, when, I grew, when I grew up. And uh, I got a chance to meet Muhammad Ali. He invited me to his hotel room once. And uh, back in the late 90s, and uh, I got a photo on my wall with me and the champ. And uh, it's, it's very uh, precious to me. Um, but to get a chance to do something like this, um, come out fight week and cover the, the fights, um, this is actually a dream come true for me. And um, I thank ESPN for doing that for me because um, this right here, man, I'm I'm like a kid at Christmas time just waiting to open the presents. Can't wait to Saturday night. That's crazy. That's how I am right now speaking to you. <laughs> You're like that. Covering all this uh, yeah, yeah. that you're covering. Yeah, man. yeah. yeah. Um, to see um, so many of the legends, you know, in the hotel, you know, so many of the trainers, you know, like Ronnie Shields, you know, walking by, you know. Um, Ronnie's a Houston guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a Houston guy. Um, um, and then to see the fighters, you know, um, um, like um, Winky Wright. You know, I hadn't seen Winky in years, and I saw him at the hotel, and I was like, oh, man, there go Winky, you know. I was like a little kid, you know, hanging on the, like a fly on the wall, but. It's so awesome for me to actually be able to be out here and hang out with a lot of these guys. And a lot of them know who I am, too, which is really, really cool. So um, to mix it up and to be able to make the transition is uh, what life's really all about. We'll get to the uh, Pacquiao-Thurman fight because I, I want to hear your take on it. But with you being a boxing fan, who did you enjoy watching outside of Ali growing up? Oh, man. Uh, it, it, who did I not like watching? Uh, that's the question, you know. Uh, you know, I was a Roberto Duran fan. I was a Sugar Ray Leonard fan as well. I was a Mildred Taylor fan. I was a Julio Cesar Chavez fan as well. You know, I was a, you know, Pornell Whitaker fan. You know, God rest his soul, um, um, you know, as well. You know, um, so it, it was, you know, I just loved the fight game. You know, um, the fight game is just, you know, it's such a true, true art. You know, um, pugilist, uh, two, two guys meeting in the ring. Um, those, those two guys are are more different than most people that walk, you know, the face of the earth, two guys that go in there and do combat. Um, and for me to actually be able to, you know, um, sit back and watch it and, and take it all in, you know, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. You know, I always wanted to be a boxer. I always wanted to, you know, step inside of the ring, but, you know, it, it I, I couldn't do it. It really do take a special type of person to actually go out there and do that. Why couldn't you do it? Well, uh, wrestling came along, and I realized I didn't have to get hit in the face. <laughs> it still make good money. <laughs> I mean, it, and it turned out to be pretty good for me. Uh, um, wrestling, uh, um, unlike boxing, um, I, boxing, it seemed like something I had to work at. Um, you have to train um, because boxing is a defensive sport. You have, to, you have to start when you're really, really young most of the time as well to be able to you know, actually find that technique. Um, but for me, with wrestling, I didn't start till I was 25 years old. I never played any sports, and it was like deja vu. It was like a place that I had been my whole life. Um, so it just seemed like the uh, perfect fit for me. Yeah. I've always wanted to know this growing up watching you, the Spinner Rooney. Yeah. What was the genesis of that? How did you come up with that? And, yeah. and how did it go over when you pitched it? Or did you just straight out do it? <laughs> I never pitched anything. I just did it. You know, you know. I always say, you know, if you go too far out, they'll, they'll pull you back. Um, but for me, um, you know, I used to be a, a dancer when I was a kid. Um, I used to be in all the talent shows and all the high schools and 
all the you know small clubs around the area. Um, you know, and then I became a break dancer as well. You know, after the pop locking craze went away, and you know, I was I got into wrestling school. Um, like I say, later on in life, but. I still remember the spin rooney and I just did it one day in practice, and it went over, and then I did it one day at a show, and uh, it went over very well at the show, and I was like, wow, um, it's been my signature move ever since day one. Yeah, yeah when you did it, I, I, I'd always just mark out over it. <laughs> Pacquiao and Thurman, you know, a, a lot's been said about this fight. Uh, a lot of people feel it's a 50-50 fight, uh, but a lot of people also think that youth will and can trump experience. What's your take on this fight from your perspective? Well, you know, um, you know, normally fighters, you know, they, they normally shock the world, you know, like when they're 18, 19, 20 years old. They don't normally shock the world when they're 40, <laughs> you know. Um, I think um, the difference in this fight is, you know, Manny Pacquiao and how much, how much time he's put into the sport. Um, I look at Manny Pacquiao and I say, um, if this fight, if this fight would have went down 10 years ago, I would be weighing Manny Pacquiao, um, you know, totally, just because of his greatness and who he is and what he's done for the sport. I was talking to Boo Boo Mancini, and I and I and I, and I was, you know, and I was I was asking him, you know, you know, the, the difference in a fight like that, you know, a, a fighter, you know, such as you know Alexis Arguello um, against um, Boom Boom. Uh, Arguello was 28 years old when he was fighting um, Boom Boom Mancini at 20 years old. Now that 28 year old, man, he's in the peak prime of his career. Now I say Boom Boom Mancini would have fought a 40 year old Lexus Arguello, the same guy that Aaron Pryor and all those guys got a hold it probably would have been a totally different fight. You know, so I, I, I look at the young guy like Keith Thurman, you know, coming off of an injury, fighting Jose Cito Lopez. That was one of the toughest fights he could have came back and fought. Um, and I think that's going to help him um, in this fight with Manny. And one thing that, you know, one, that people need to think about from that Jose Cito Lopez fight is, man, Keith Thurman legs, they held up for 12 rounds, man. And, and that's what's going to propel him to victory in this fight. It's not, it may not be his hands, it, it, it may be his legs. Would you be surprised if Manny wins by knockout though? I would be thoroughly surprised um, if, he, if he knock him out because he didn't knock out Broner. You know, and Broner's, you know, a decent defensive fighter. And I think, um, you know, Keith Thurman can go into a defensive shell and still throw punches at the same time. That's the difference between a, a Broner and a Keith Thurman. What do you know about the Charlos? I know they're from uh, they're Houston. Have you been following them? Oh yeah, yeah. I was um, at, at, at the fight in Houston. Um, you know, Adams, man, that kid. He, he didn't he didn't come to lose. Yeah, you know, yeah. and um, you know sometimes you know matchups make fights. Sometimes it's just that one guy that can really make you look really bad, like a Damian Maya in UFC. Yeah. You know, um, certain guys, you know, um, can can really um, you know flip the apple card, and I think that's what happened in that fight. But the Charlo brothers, I, I actually talked to both of those guys, and, and um, I was talking to them, and, and, I, and I gave them my honest opinion on their on their earlier career coming up. I said, I, I didn't really believe in you guys. I didn't think you guys were the truth. But as, as they've gotten older, um, their boxing skills have definitely matured. I think, um, uh, I think the Charlo brothers may need to mature a little bit as well as, as, as a human being, as, as young men. Was there anyone in the back during your career that you felt like, man, like this guy's tough? Like I, I could see him like going into like MMA or, or boxing. You know, um, believe it or not, man, most of the wrestlers are really tough, man. Uh, it's a lot of tough guys. No, I believe it. It's a tough sport. There's a lot of tough guys, but you know, Kurt Angle, when, you know, when he first you know jumped in, he, he was a guy that definitely could have made the made the switch and gone over. Um, Sheldon Benjamin, he was another guy who you know had the skills to actually go over and do do something like that. You know, even Charlie Haas back in the day, he was a guy who had you know amateur background. He flipped me up so high one day, man. <laughs> You know, I was like, what the heck's going on here? But, but no, nah, man, uh, a lot of those guys are really tough guys. People ask me if I would have tried it, you know, when I was younger, and I go, man, not in a million years, man. Uh, it's a tough, tough sport. Um, it's something that you really got to be dedicated to 100%, and um, it's a lot of trial and tribulation that comes along with it. Who's your favorite fighter to watch right now in current? Oh, man, um, favorite fighter to watch, uh, Regis Prograce. Uh, yeah, yeah, man, that, that, that kid right there, man, don't nobody want to fight him. Everybody want to stay away from him. He like the plague. He's a guy that, you know, is looking for a fight. And, um, 
he's um, he's one of the guys that I really want to see, you know, step in there and you know fight against the best fighters out there because I want to see how good he really is. Have you been following the heavyweights uh, lately? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I've been following Wilder. You know, of course, Joshua, epic fail. You know, um, and, and as well as we got a lot of young guys um, out there that's trying to come up. Um, the heavyweight game isn't what it used to be. Um, of, of course, um, um, that's, that's, that's something that we're trying to get back to. And I, I, I must say with PBC bringing boxing back, putting it back on the map, bringing it back to the forefront of sports, um, I think it's very, very important. And I think they're doing a good job as far as trying to get the heavyweight pitcher back to the point um, to where it was uh, once upon a time. I know you've been uh, busy now post uh, wrestling career. What, what are you doing these days now? I mean, well, I still work for WWE. Um, I work. I do all the pay per views. I'm an analyst um, with, with with those guys. Um, I got my own um, a wrestling school that I've had for 15 years. I have my own wrestling promotion called Reality of Wrestling in Houston as well. Um, we're on Fight TV. Come on on weekly. Uh, we're up to 250 shows right now. Um, I work for ESPN um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights. Um, ESPN. Um, 97.5 in Houston, Hall of Fame. Welcome inside the Hall of Fame with Booker T and Brad Gilmore. And um, I got eight-year-old twins, man. And I'm just, I just, I just keep working, man, because those little notes they just keep coming in the mailbox, and I open them, and it's a, it's another bill that I gotta pay. You know, so we just keep working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Booker, man, thank you so much. This really was a pleasure and an honor for me to speak to you. Thank you so much. Here with Booker T, Marcos Viegas in Las Vegas.